Hey, it's Chris here. Wanted to give you a quick development progress update. So uh, I have just launched the app and this is a fresh install. And what the user is going to see is a sort of onboarding sequence. This first message is going to tell them what the app is about. They click continue. The next one is going to tell them that they can tap on a metric, uh, tap and hold, I think we should say, because that's actually the, the proper gesture. Um, they can tap and hold to bring up a tooltip. Uh, and then they can also tap on the list tab to start tracking their own competitors. So what we have here is sort of like a dummy profile. This, um, this one doesn't make any requests out to the Instagram API at this point because we don't have their account token or sorry, their access token to use for any sort of network API requests. After they play around with this dummy profile, they're going to click on list and they're going to be able to log in with Facebook uh, to access their connected Instagram business profile. And the reason, again, if you didn't catch the other videos, the reason we have to log in with Facebook is because we need to have all these requirements to use the specific Instagram API that we are using. So I'm going to hit login with Facebook. And because I've logged in before, even though this is a fresh install, I think it saves some sort of information on the system itself. So although I deleted the app and I ran Xcode to reinstall it, it still knows that I've logged in before. Uh, so I don't have to enter in my password. Uh, you'll also see that I changed the icon. This is just, it was just a placeholder icon, something we, we uh, whipped up really quickly to submit our Facebook app for review. Didn't want to, you know, get hung up on that. Uh, and I also changed the name from CWC app to profile scorecards. So we'll do that and we're in. Okay, so I am going to search for a username uh, and I'll click this and we're going to come here. And if you tap and hold on any metric, you're going to be able to see a tooltip describing what it is and how to use it and why it's important. Uh, something else we've implemented is copy hashtag. So this works copying to your clipboard. Uh, we also have this tapping on a post to bring up a bigger version of it. You can see that things are still in development because things are <laughs> out of place. However, this will show them, you know, the caption, a truncated version of the caption and give them a button to open this in the browser or on Instagram. Now, if I close this, I know it's going to crash because, you know, we're still building this and that's a bug we still need to work out. Um, but yeah, if you add um, a test one, for example, a dummy profile that doesn't exist will show some sort of error message there. We have a settings screen and a logout log button right there. Just to quickly show you uh, the design part of it, in case you missed the other video, you can see that is the three step onboarding process. Uh, this is the profile analytics screen with the pop up tooltips. And uh, there are still some error states that we have to uh, program in. We don't have this paywall. We might actually launch without that because uh, depending on how much time we have left, because um, we do want to launch this and do some app marketing before, you know, maybe hopefully before end of April, but we're targeting end of April to have the app at least launched. And then here's the feed screen where you can add or the list screen where you can add profiles. So that's the design here. I think in terms of functionality, it really is just uh, we've got most of it down. We need to nail down all of the um, the error cases and the edge cases to make sure the app doesn't crash or behave strangely. And also, you can see that we have quite a bit of work to do in terms of styling the app, which I'll talk about in a future video, like how we're going to apply this design to the app. I'll talk about that later. Um, in terms of other progress, we've actually got our Facebook app review approved uh, from the Facebook team. So. Uh, we submitted our, you know, it was quite an arduous process actually. So if I go to app review here and go down to requests and you can see here that uh, this review was uh, completed and we requested these three permissions and that it was approved. So that took way faster than we thought. Um, 
even in the documentation, it take it said it'd take a few weeks from Stack Overflow. We saw other people's experiences that they said it took a few weeks. For us, we submitted it maybe 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and I heard back at about 9 p.m. that same day. And luckily, we were approved. So that's amazing. And if I didn't tell you before um, what we needed to provide for the review, you actually need to provide um, an app for them. And they provide instructions on how to do this. But essentially, when you build your Xcode app and it produces this dot app file here, you can go show in Finder and then you can you basically zip up this dot app file and you upload it to them and they're, they're going to be able to launch it in the simulator and try it out. We also have to ex uh, explain why we are requesting these permissions. So for every single permission you request, you tell them why you need it and how you're using it and provide a little screencast, a walkthrough of how you're using it. So we did this for all three of the permissions that we were requesting. Uh, and then, yeah, we got approved. And in terms of the app website, we've also made a little bit of progress on that. So I mentioned before that our designer also happens to be a copywriter by trade. And so he is going to be creating all of the copy and the graphics for our app website. Normally, I would suggest for most people just to create like a one page website. Um, you know, as long as you have I would say links to your app in the app store, you know, a place for people to provide feedback and to get support. Um, another good thing would be a way for people to sign up to a newsletter, not a newsletter, but like a mailing list so that you can email them if there's a new app feature or something like that. Capturing someone's email would be great if they want to hear more about the app in the future. For us, um, because we are planning to build future apps, um, after this one, and we all want it to live under the same um, sort of family or the same name. It's not going to be under Code with Chris. Uh, we are going to have another name. I registered a domain called madeapps.io. There's nothing there right now, but I imagine that, you know, all of the apps we build will, will be under this sort of brand or name. And we're going to have, it's going to have its own website. Uh, and then it's going to contain information about all of the apps that uh, that we build. So I would I would say for the website, use what you know. There's no need to learn a new skill like to go learn React or to go learn JavaScript or HTML or anything like that just to build this website. Use a website builder. Uh, some people just use a Facebook page, right? Um, so don't get hung up on building a website for your app. It's definitely not the most important thing. Um, in our situation, our designer also happens to have um, some knowledge about using Webflow. So we're going to have him uh, build the website using Webflow, uh, which is a little more involved because it's not... It, I don't know if you've seen Webflow before. I've created a tutorial on it before, but it is a way to... Like, it's not completely drag and drop like... Squarespace or Wix or something like that. I think those would um, be a little more intuitive. This is a visual builder, but there's also a lot of um, coding components to it. So it's sort of in between coding it by writing raw code and completely building it using a visual interface like Wix or Squarespace. So it's somewhere in the middle. Um, like I said, I would not recommend to learn a new tool just to build the website yeah so that's that so that's what's happening um it we're really lucky in the sense that jc is able to do uh he's sort of multidisciplinary if it were up to me um i probably would have just whipped something up in wordpress because that's what i'm used to that's what word uh, code with chris runs on uh wordpress slap a theme on it you know customize the text put some graphics on it and boom there you go you have a simple web page um yeah so that's it and I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next Insight video, I'll probably talk about how we're going to apply this design into our Xcode project, because as you can see, it's looking pretty bare. Functionally, most of it is there, but it's still not looking like the designs quite yet. All right, this has been a long video. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.